This is the GTN Show brought to you by Amp Human. Welcome along and we've got a packed one for you this week. Plenty of e-racing news. We've got photos from you guys as well as from the pros and we've got a lot of inspiring challenge stories. On top of that, we have a giveaway from Polar. Some exciting news there to share with you later on. But Mark and I are going to be starting things off by sharing our triathlon mistakes. Yes, we have got a few, so get ready for a bit of a laugh. Hello guys, um, I thought we could have a bit of fun to start off today and reminisce on some of our past triathlon tales, the good and the bad. Now, let's be honest, there's a lot going on in triathlon. We've got three different sports, two transitions, a heck of a lot of kit, and that means there's a lot that can go wrong. So, we're gonna have fun, we're gonna share some of our own personal triathlon mistakes, and so we don't completely embarrass ourselves alone, get involved in the comments section below and let us know some of your own triathlon mistakes. I've got quite a lot, so I've made a note of mine here. I've whittled it down to just a few. First one, now you've kind of all seen this one on camera before, when I attempted to jump onto my brand new BMC time machine. Ouch, yeah. I mean, in my own admission, it was a brand new bike. I'd never done a transition or flying mount onto it before. The saddle was too high. I can't think of any more excuses. It was just silly. And sadly, and very unfortunate for me, it wasn't the first time. Um, actually, I did it live on TV when I was leading out of the water. I'm at 70.3 Staffordshire. I was there with a new bike with a rear-mounted bottle cage, so the bottle was sticking up behind the saddle. Never had one of those before. Went to jump on it as it ordinarily would, caught my leg, stumbled off into the railings live on TV. Brilliant. Uh, next one. Um, oh yeah, I had a year of, or year or two, of crashes. Firstly, in Salford, it was one of my first big races actually as a junior when I first got into triathlon. I confidently led into this roundabout with a lot of speed and rather than going round the roundabout, I kind of just went straight on, on my side. So yeah, my bike handling wasn't so great back then. Um, another one was at the Junior European Championships. I got a breakaway with the likes of Alistair and Johnny Brown. There was just a few of us away. It's really going for it, super happy. And then me and Yao Silva had a little bit of a collision around the um, turnaround point. Um, just a bit embarrassing really, because it was probably gonna be one of my best races, probably my best race to date. Haven't many, so hey, um, that was a bit of a shame. Um, and then finally, a more recent one that Fraser was present at actually, and that was Ironman 70.3 Dublin. Um, again, leading out of the water, feet on top of the shoes, and my feet just slipped off. Um, one foot went into the front wheel, um, and annoyingly, it was right in front of probably the busiest part of the course. Everyone stood around going, Phew. it just went super quiet. I had to then run back down the road, collect my shoes, sort out my jam chain, and then continue on. I did finish the race, although my foot was not in such good condition. Um, Fraser sent in a couple for us to have a bit of a giggle at as well. Um, now, in his first senior European Cup, he was so excited um, and he said he ran out of T2 with his helmet on and being afraid of littering, he did a whole two and a half K loop with his helmet on. Who else out there has done that? We've seen a lot of this in the past. Um, this next one, I actually vaguely remember. Now we used to do the French Grand Prix circuit together. Um, and the problem is when you're in one of these French teams, there's five of you in a team or sometimes more, you often are all in the same kit, same bike. So the transitions, all your bikes be racked up together, five bikes, imagine it, exactly the same, all the same kit, sometimes exactly the same shoes. This is what happened for Fraser. It came into transition, tried putting these shoes on, struggling, two sizes too small it turned out, trying to run off with his teammates running shoes and then had to come back and confess to his mate who was in the pack behind that I've got your shoes. It took him a while unfortunately. Um, then Ironman UK Bolton, uh, TV motorbike alongside him, plowing along, I'm assuming this is the time when Fraser was in the lead, did very well at um, Ironman UK, and um, suddenly they came to a dual carriageway, realizing both him and the motor driver were off course by quite a few miles. That's gotta hurt. And then next one, I remember Fraser telling me about this one, this was in Malibu, California. Um, it was a point to point swim, um, and he completely forgotten to put his wetsuit on, so he had, and it meant that he had to dash all the way back to get the wetsuit and then back again. So, 
God, that's going to be a frantic start. Talking about frantic though, I know Heather likes to leave things a little bit last minute and rather chilled, so I wonder if that will feature in any of her mistakes. Well, some of those certainly made me chuckle. So thanks guys for sharing them. And yes, Mark and Fraser have obviously done many more triathlons at a much more serious level than I have, but I have managed to make a few mistakes in the small amount of triathlons I've done. And I'm also gonna share some from my modern pentathlon days. So to get things going, I thought I'd rewind the clock back to when I was pretty young, going to junior world championships in modern pentathlon. And I got to the airport and realized I didn't have my air pistol. Now, this is obviously quite a personal piece of kit. It's molded to your hand, your sights are set for you, and basically it's gonna make a big difference when it comes to the shoot. But the coach said, I didn't have time to go back to my flat and get it. I reckon I did, but I think it was a bit of a learning curve because once we got too hungry for the world champs, he managed to find uh, a pistol for me that happened to belong to the guy with the largest hands and I wasn't allowed to touch the sights. So I kind of could hardly hold this gun. Um, fair to say I didn't win that competition, but I learned from it, I think. Um, although forgetfulness does sort of go with me a little bit. Um, Fast forward to near the end of my pentathlon career and uh, it was World Cup final in China. I had my whole bag packed, so for all five sports in one bag. It's a pretty heavy piece of kit to lug around, so I left it in the lobby for breakfast. Um, had breakfast, chatting to my friend, got on the bus, reading my book on the way to the venue, which was sort of 45 minutes away. Got off the bus, everyone else getting their bags and I was there waiting for my bag to come off the bus. It didn't come off the bus. It was still in the hotel lobby. I had to ring the performance director who thankfully was there, um, was rather angry, but later managed to see the funny side and he got me my bag after the warm up. It did mean that I had to borrow bits and pieces of kit for the fencing warm up and I looked slightly like a clown and it wasn't the best preparation, but the competition ended well and I had my kit by the end of it. So um, yeah, I was saved on that one. I've made a few smaller mistakes, I think, when it comes to triathlon and the stakes obviously weren't quite so high because I'm doing it for fun. One that was quite embarrassing um, was before I'd done my first Ironman, I was out training in LA um, and had a rather new Cannondale Slice TT bike. Um, I rode it um, out with the LA Tri Club who were wonderfully welcoming and let me join them on their club ride on a Sunday. Got to the top of this beautiful climb, Malibu, and we were just stood there chatting away and waiting for a few others to catch up. And don't quite know how I did it still to this day, but I took my water bottle out from the bottle cage and I kind of fell over with my bike and snapped my seat post. Um, it was a carbon seat post, it was completely like all the shards. Um, we managed to sort of jam it further down and I had to do this sort of very embarrassing solitary ride home. Well, thankfully someone helped me get find my way back and I managed to draft, but that ride was curtailed and it was such a beautiful ride. So I was more gutted about that and I couldn't run my bike for the next uh, few days that I was out there. So I learned the hard way on that one. A couple of others, um, when it comes to checking your bag in the night before, didn't know you had to hand your shoes into, it was a half Ironman and I only had one pair of trainers. The ones that I was wearing, I was going to wear the next day. And I had to plea with the organizers to allow me to put my shoes in the next day because otherwise I was going to be walking around barefoot all night. Thankfully got away with that one. And then the uh, Chattanooga at the World Champs, it was partly work related, but um, we kind of cut things quite close to the line when it came to the start. Um, they were letting athletes through the, um, the, the sort of finish shoot or the swim shoot where some of the, the leaders were coming out to go to our start. They weren't allowing the camera crew through. Now, um, I had a little camera kit with me and I obviously had to wait and give it to our camera guy because I couldn't just leave it on the side, um, just, you know, at the transition area. So by the time Hugh made it through for me to pass him the microphone and everything, my race had already started. So I then had to run down through, luckily it was, it was still chip timing, but I had to run through all the starting pens, getting a few funny looks when I had to say which age group I was. And yeah, I was on a bit of a catch up with the swim on that one. And the final one was for getting my rear mech hanger for Xterra in uh, Malta and as a result I couldn't ride my lovely mountain bike and I had to borrow one but yeah a few little silly things but we've all made mistakes and I think the main thing is as long as we learn from them then you know that's just part of the process right and yes maybe we haven't learned from ours as well as we could have done but hopefully you guys have now learned from at least us sharing our mistakes and you won't make those but I want to turn the tables around a little bit because hopefully you guys have had a laugh at us. Well, not saying we're gonna laugh at you, but we would love to hear your experiences, maybe some silly things that you've done in triathlons. So please, please share them with us in the comments section below. And now it's time for your opinion as we come on to the GTM poll. And we want you guys to vote on whose mistake you think was the silliest. So Mark, we're gonna go for 
doing that flying mat or attempting to do that flying mat. Every time I see that, it just, it makes me cringe, um, but slightly giggle at the same time. Um, Fraser running two and a half K with his helmet on. I would love to have seen that. Um, or me forgetting my air pistol. So um, do leave your votes by clicking up there on the link and let us know whose mistake you think was the silliest. Anyway, now it's time for the results from last week. And uh, last week's poll, we asked, are you training too hard or are you just taking it easy during the coronavirus? Well, we had actually 72% of you said that you're training really hard. So um, making the most of it, great stuff. Um, then it was 22% of you said you're taking it easy. I'm going that way at the moment. Yeah, struggling with motivation. Um, and finally, some of you are training easy because you don't fancy going hard just because you're kind of maybe being a little bit Daisy, maybe I fall in that bracket. That's just 6% of you. Um, but yeah, great to see or say how you guys are training at the moment. It's now time for try news and we don't want to sound like a stuck record because yes there is another virtual reality race although we think they're great they're bringing the community together and giving us targets and things to keep focused on this one comes from the castle series triathlon which is based in the uk france and ireland and i know mark and fraser have raced several of their events in the past and they're always in iconic grounds that obviously have castles within them well they're running a series of races they've got three one in each country so it's going to start with Vive la France uh, the 24th to 26th of April so that will have happened this last weekend then the second event is VE Day the 75th anniversary that's the 8th to the 10th of May so based in the UK although obviously it's online so it doesn't really matter and then the final one is Luck of the Irish and that's the 22nd to the 24th of May now these events aren't free but they are going to use 20% of your entry fee that's going to go to the Macmillan charity so it's going back into a good cause. There's also going to be an official prize giving that's going to go live on Facebook. So another wonderful concept and a way of bringing people together and giving us that community that we are all so much, I think, missing at the moment of being able to have it in person. But talking of community and challenges and bringing people together and raising money, over in the UK, we've had a bit of a, a national hero emerge from this situation. It's 99-year-old Tom Moore, who I think is about to turn 100, has grabbed the heart of the nation as he decided to walk 100 laps of his garden ahead of his 100th birthday to try and raise some money for our National Health Service because they'd helped him through a difficult period. Now, when we last checked, I think he'd raised something like £28 million. So I said he got the heart of the nation. Um, so quite an incredible feet. But there's a, another veteran who has been sort of maybe inspired by Tom Moore, who's actually gone and done a triathlon last weekend. So there was a charity sort of event called the 2.6, which was to make up for the fact it would have been the London Marathon last Sunday, and obviously the 26 miles being represented by the 2.6. And a huge amount of charities are losing out by so many of these events not happening, and the London Marathon is a massive fundraiser. Well, there has been a, a big sort of campaign to go and do something that's 2.6 related and it was actually Graham Bell who's 94 years old decided to make that into a triathlon while still social isolating at home he rode 2.6 miles he biked 2.6 miles and then he ran 2.6 laps of his garden. At the age of 94, I think that's amazingly impressive. And he did all of that for his chosen charity, which was the Sheffield Royal Society for the Blind. Why then triathlon? I mean, who would have thought those two go together? Well, the USA Triathlon Foundation have just announced a partnership with The Vice Wine, a winery that's based in the Napa Valley in California. They have come up with a new limited edition wine called the Tri-Blend. So it's using three grapes, but ultimately it's going to be helping triathlon or helping people through the sport of triathlon. So all proceeds from this limited edition wine are going to go to the USA Triathlon Foundation, who help to change people's lives through giving them opportunities of doing the sports of swimming, cycling and running. I say cheers to that. Perks of working from home. Well, on a more serious note, we are sadly still seeing more triathlon events getting cancelled. The latest victims being the World Triathlon Series and the Mixed Relay World Championships, which were due to be held in Hamburg the 11th and 12th of July. They have just been cancelled as Germany is not allowing any mass events until at least the end of August. Canada have been following suit. We've got the World Triathlon Grand Final, which wasn't actually due until the 22nd and 23rd of August. That has now been announced as cancelled as well. 
well. So we'll keep you posted on any replacement dates for any of these upcoming events when we hear them. Sticking with Canada, there is some positive news as their National Triathlon Federation have decided to team up with Full Gas and they're going to be putting on a series of virtual cycling races as well as actually temporarily freezing the membership for their members. So if members have already paid, then they can carry that over to next year. And if they haven't paid, then they're asking if they can afford to, if they can donate that money to their chosen charity. So that's a nice little touch and just giving a little bit back to the community as well. And now for the race news, or the virtual race news, as I've now named it. And I'm going to start with the Ironman virtual racing, which took place over the 51-50 format, the Olympic distance, over the Ruby platform. And we had a stellar lineup for the pro field on the men's and the women's side. Starting with the women's results, first place went to Emma Pallon, and then around a minute behind, we had Meredith Kessler. In third, Leslie Smith, and then in fourth, Manon Jeanette. And then on the men's side, it was Arnold Gillou that took the win from France, Matt Hansen just under two minutes behind in second, Niels Fromhold in third, and then fourth went to Ben Hoffman. Now to update you on the Zwift Classics results, as we filmed the show last week we were able to give you the men's results but the women's race was yet to happen as we filmed the show. So to update you on the women's race, uh, the previous week's winner um, Ashley Mormon Passio, she was right up there again but had to settle for third this week as the Swedish rider Cecilia Hansen took the win but we had a fantastic result from our triathletes from the Super League Triathlon team. Sophie Coldwell managed to make her way into that small breakaway group and sprinted to a close sixth place finish. Um, Angelica Olmo took 47th and Ilaria Zane 96th. We're now back to the Z Pro Race on Zwift, bringing some of the best pro triathletes in the world together on one start line, both short course and long course. So really quite exciting and a unique race here. Um, but there was a little bit of controversy this week, particularly so in the women's race, as a couple of pro cyclists, Adam and Simon Yates in fact, somehow appeared on this closed course that the women were competing on. This allowed a couple of riders in the race to essentially get a little assistance from these pro cyclists. Um, whether it affected the results or not, it's not too clear, but it did seem like it sort of split the field. That being said, it seems like the results we're in line with those riders that were most dom dominant both in this week and last week's race. So first place went to Lucy Charles, second to Emma Pallon, and third to Ruth Assel. Meanwhile, there were fireworks taking place in the men's race. Quite excitingly, we had both the Brownlee brothers in this race alongside Lionel Sanders. So I think a lot of people were sat there excited to see how that would go down. However, it was actually Sam Laidlow and Albert Mullins that just seemed to keep pushing the pace on the two lap rather hilly course particularly so as they pushed on up the climbs. Um, on the final climb, it was Sam Laidlow that broke away from the field to take the win. However, referring to Zwift Power, if anyone out there hasn't used Zwift Power before, Zwift Power tends to be the official results for Zwift. It's where we go to to verify the results and verify the riders. Now, it seems like Sam's 6.4 watts per kilo for over 33 minutes has been removed from the results, so the results going by is with power, are Albert Mullins in first, Anthony Costas in second, and Lionel Sanders in third. All right, it is a giveaway time, and some of you out there may have noticed this latest release from Polar. It's the rather fancy and rugged Polar Grit X. This is an outdoor multi-sport watch. It's got GPS enabled with compass and altimeter, and it's got turn-by-turn -turn guidance, which can be linked up to Komoot. It's also got fueling guidance and something called Hill Splitter, which basically tracks how many hills you've been up and down throughout a run. It is essentially geared towards those outdoor enthusiasts out there, someone like myself that just loves to explore off the beaten track. I was actually playing around with this over the weekend and up popped the weather for the next few days. How cool is that? Um, I've yet to play around with some of the other features within it, but it does still have a number of functions that I've quite enjoyed using in the Vantage V, which I've got on my wrist right now, such as the running power index, the sleep data. Um, I should add the Vantage V is still kind of targeted more towards the 
performance orientated athletes out there. It's got a couple of additional features in it, such as the recovery stuff and around testing functionalities. Um, they are both quite similar in their shape and their weight. I would say though, the Vantage V does still have that slightly more performance feel and look to it. It is slightly thinner, whereas the grip is a little bit larger, just a fraction, but it's got that kind of solid reassuring feel to it, which I guess you'd want in an outdoorsy adventure watch. But here's the exciting bit. We have one grit up for grabs and one Vantage V. Now, if you wanna get involved, just go down to the description below this video, click that link and head on through to our giveaway. Best of luck to you. It's back to me as I choose some of my favorite photos and videos. We've got a nice selection for you today. This first one comes from Peter in Murrieta, California, and he's titled it as Run With Heather. So on the treadmill, good work, Peter. Those of you who haven't yet joined me, every Thursday evening, UK time, we're doing a live run that's both on YouTube and every other week it's on Zwift. So check that out. If you're watching the show as it's come out, it will be tomorrow. I'll be on Zwift and YouTube for this one. So hopefully I will see you guys there. Uh, next up though, onto another treadmill. This time we've got a little video. Take a watch of this. It is Joshua um, running in his garage. He says, garage altitude training. And it's a really nice story here. He's gonna be running the elevation of Ben Nevis. So uh, maybe a bit more realistic than Everesting on a treadmill um, to raise money for Age UK. Um, I think it's particularly essential that um, carers get adequate protective equipment um, so that they can help the elderly and don't so the elderly don't become um, socially isolated. And he says that um, yeah, if you're wondering what the the gloves, hat, and scarf are about, well, that's to replicate the fact that it's going to get colder as you go up Ben Nevis. I mean, not sure about the sort of core, but anyway, we'll, we'll let you off on that one. Um, Joshua, as you're doing such a good job, lovely to see. Um, another video here, and uh, this is brilliant, from South Africa, it's sent in from Pierre, and he says it's a video of his uncle, which I'm sure his uncle's given permission for this, of an old, uh, converted an old vacuum cleaner into an indoor trainer. I've had a look at this a few times and I'm still not quite sure what parts of vacuum, the vacuum cleaner. To me, it looks like a broom handle. Um, but anyway, a wonderful um, innovation if that works. And I know in the UK, Turbo Trainers sold out within the first few weeks of lockdown. So um, if it's somewhere you can train at home without going outside and staying safe, then I think that's brilliant. Um, Next one from Victor, who's in Switzerland. Obviously, Switzerland are still allowed outside by the looks of this photo, because he says, making the best of an empty running track in beautiful weather. Um, the opportunity to practice getting on and off the bike, and you can see his bike shoes there on his rather nice looking specialized Venge Pro. So thanks, Victor. Now, this is time to get a little bit envious of the view. This one comes in from Faye in Gibraltar. Um, oh, what a beautiful sunny day that is. Training for her first Ironman, which has now been deferred to 2020. Stay strong, everyone, um, from 2020, sorry. Yeah, well, Faye, good luck when it does come around. It'll certainly be worth it. And hopefully, all these races being postponed again, they give us that extra bit of motivation and energy when it comes around next year. Uh, now, to finish off, we've got this one from Alan. Um, it's his giant content in the cave that we'd give our cave a nature aspect with this Watopia inspired dinosaur and palm tree edition. I love the imagination that's gone into that. Sorry, I've got one more. I couldn't leave this one out. Um, just spotted it. This is our final video from today and it's been sent in from Eric. Take a look at this. He says, I was bored from all this time spent at home, so with the help of my daughter, I made a quick video. If you can't race, but you want to so bad, this is what happens. I think there's quite a lot of imagination flowing around at the moment from you guys, so make sure you keep sending in your videos, your pictures, whatever it is you're up to, because yeah, we want to see what you're doing and it'll inspire us and hopefully entertain us at the same time. You can do that using the uploader that will be on the screen right now, or you can also find it in the description below. And as I'm nosy, I've been keeping an eye on the pros and their social media posts too, so I've got a few of those to share with you. This first one, I know we've kind of 
covered um, what David McNamee is up to a few times, but his post just amused me, so I had to put this one in. Um, again, he's still trying to swim. It's got a nice high elbow action, but other than that, I don't really think he's going to be getting much from this wetsuit photo. But uh, I think it's fair to say that the pros are struggling with having to be quarantined just as much as us age groupers, or maybe even more if you have a look at uh, the caption to this photo from David. Um, yeah, I think we can probably learn from him there on um, not buying a cheap treadmill. Sounds like, or maybe if you run at David's pace, it's just not going to be able to keep up. I don't have that worry. But um, great to see that he's still got a sense of humour at the moment, as has Lionel Sanders with his continued banter between himself and Cam Worth. And just made me laugh. Didn't want to offend Cam Worth, so he made sure to put a t-shirt on for this shot. I mean, yeah, neck scarf t-shirt, same difference. <laughs> Anyway, uh, another one with a little bit of banter, this time with his teammate, comes from Christian Blumenfeld, um, the Norwegian triathlete who's just bantering with Gustav Eden, um, talking about getting the right photo for Strava or Instagram. It's very important. It looks like Christian's got his sponsors in there, so they should be happy at least. And then this one from Claire Cashmore. Now, earlier I talked about the 26.2 challenge or the 2.6 challenge. Well, Claire took this to the ex extreme over the weekend and she did 26 different challenges, including swimming without a wetsuit in this sort of homemade, well not homemade, but sort of backyard paddling pool that apparently was, I think about 14 degrees and she had to swim for 26 minutes in it. So check out her Instagram if you haven't seen that for some of the incredible challenges she got up to over a weekend. But it's brilliant that people are using their imagination to keep themselves entertained, keep us entertained and yeah, hopefully stay home and staying safe. And now time for the caption competition. Starting with last week's photo on screen right now. We had loads of great captions coming in. I'm actually gonna rattle through a bunch of them today. So starting with this one from Tony Thomas said, new post COVID-19 rule, athletes must spray themselves off before entering transition. Amy and Nagaria said to activate your running legs, just add water. Miguel Lara said, someone has got a drinking problem. Lord Burt, this wasn't meant to be a wetsuit race, but it is one now. Thomas K said, ah, big climb coming. Let's get rid of those extra kilos. I've heard that one before, but when someone's actually drinking water, yeah, not very sensible. Uh, Pete Lowe, you are the winner, said, closest I'm getting to get a swim leg. Very relevant for present times. Um, so you are the winner of the GTN cap. Get in touch and we'll send that out to you. Um, but now for this week's caption comp photo, and it is from Ironman 70.3 Wiesbaden in Germany. And this is of Maurice Clavel. Um, I believe taking second place to Bart Ehrnort here and looking extremely excited with that podium finish. Um, make sure you drop your captions in the comments section below and hopefully you'll be the winner of the GTN cap. But that is it for the GTN show this week. We hope you have enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up, give it a like if you have. We've got loads coming up on the channel, including a vlog. Heather and myself are gonna be showing you what we get up to when we're filming from home, the complications we run into when we're doing that. We've also got um, GTN's top tech, a bit of a compilation of our favorite tech from over the last few years since we launched GTN. Also, don't forget, we have got our GTN shop. We've got some indoor training bundles on there, which may be quite useful for now. We've also got some great videos already up on the channel, including an update on our 5K challenge and a Sell Italia What Saddle video, which is an unboxing of that brand new saddle and an opportunity for you to win that.